This is lecture 11 of CS 147 computer architecture study. In this lecture we will review uh, construction of microprocessor and we will construct a processor in this uh, lecture, a complete processor which support CS 147 DV, uh, that instruction set architecture that we have talked about in very first lecture, lecture 1. Our topic would be like we start with putting together an ALU, like we have uh, reviewed how the adder subtractor work and what is the circuit and also reviewed multiplier and divider. So let's put them together along with some other functionality that our processor need and we pack them in, in a ALU. And once we do this, then we'll shift our uh, effort to understand how can we construct a complete processor which supports a target instruction set architecture. So uh, under that we will review like instruction fetch, uh, how we can construct that circuitry, how we can construct a, a circuitry which actually go and uh, execute your R type instruction, what is the circuitry for I type instruction, what is the circuitry for J type instruction, then we put together all of them into one box called a microprocessor. So in the topic of this ALU, uh, so we first uh, define uh, how that ALU as the interface wise look like and then we'll see look into the under underlying circuit inside the ALU. So this ALU is a sequential ALU and like we are uh, constructing for our project which is a combinatorial ALU. The sequential ALU takes two operands, uh, sorry, two bit. Also, it has two output, which is like a result usually for most of the uh, mathematical, arithmetical, and uh, uh, logical operation results as just 32 bit. But if the some operation like multiplication or division needs like uh, 232 bit, either like to store quotient and remainder or multiplication result is together 32 uh, sorry 64 bit for a 32 bit processor for that we have two output line uh, 32 bit each which is result or low and another high and then being a sequential circuit this guy takes a clock and takes a operation code let's operation code be a 4 bit operation code okay and this operation code is follows like this 0 is no operation and then 1 is addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, bitwise and or not less than shift lo left logical, shift right logical. So it packs this uh, 10 different function along with the no operation. Also remember since this is a sequential circuit there is of course another input for resetting this thing. Uh, so, but we don't haven't seen that. Okay, uh, We haven't shown that in the schematic diagram because this is kind of an given like an assumed fact that it has a reset as well and it has a done uh, signal which means like when an operation is being present to the alu after some clock cycle passed once the operation is done this alu will send out a down signal to whoever requested the operation okay so to that do that what we'll do here is our strategy We'll put our sequential multiplier, divider, okay, uh, shift circuit. Maybe we can do it combinational. Maybe we can do it. Uh, let's take a, a sequential sh shifter, which basically is nothing but a shift register with uh, shift upper capability in the both direction and a parallel load. So that's the that's three component is basically our sequential component. And we have an adder subtractor, and we have like 32 bit NOR, 32 bit one NAND, and 32 bit AND. So, why this for us? Remember, we are supporting AND operation. So, it's 32 bit 2 to 1 AND we have. We are having a NOR operation, which gives me 32 bit NOR. We are getting the output together from that output of the NOR, and we have an OR operation also, which means inversion of the NOR. So we have 32 bit inversion as well that produce a OR result. Okay, so here uh, the 
catch is this or the important point to note is this all these components create some result okay irrespective whether I, I ask for a multiplier or division or shifter or add subtractor etc or logical operation it produces result it produces and result it produces or nor this or whole internal circuitry and shift result reminder quotient high low and of course extra sequential multiplier divided and shifter they will send a down signal okay uh, for it it's only that depending on the operation which is like your four bit operation code it selects the corresponding result so you can well imagine this is a big chunk of multiplexer is there which is multiplexing or selecting result between multiplier divider shifter add or subtract addition subtraction slt operation and nor or all these 10 operation so it is basically 10 to 1 32 bit multiplexer okay so this is a selection circuit and we have a little bit of controller we'll talk more detail about this controller what this controller basically uh, does is this like bar clock tick it it basically either uh, send request to all the sequential elements multiplier divider shifter etc and also set like an left uh, or right shift to the uh, shifter operation okay and maybe it has a start operation for multiplier and divider it can selectively start and not start it depends on what it tries to do and then uh, it has a parallel load capability for the shift it will involve that control signal uh, when it is needed it also issues a control signal s and a for addition or subtraction from the other subtractor circuit so essentially this alu controller issues controlling signal so start signal is for shifter divider multiplier so they start their operation so in this case for these three sequential it is optional that we produce the result every time or we don't produce it depends really on the strategy and whoever is implementing this alu controller it really doesn't matter at the end of the day because we have a selection circuit to select depending on what operation code we select what result to give be given out of this alu circuit and you see the selection of this uh, uh, multiplexer is really your operation 4-bit operation code okay so you have this uh, uh, this 10 to 10 to 1 multiplexer 32 bit but in in fact this is like since it is takes a 4 bit as a selection so it's basically 16 to 1 multiplexer we are just using 10 input of them okay or and the operand is sent is being connected to all that are subtractor shifter divider multiplier and also this and or not gates and what else uh, okay so let's look at this control signal so start i just talked about that it can start the operation it can target if it is a multiplication it can just target the multiplier on that but you see like this start signal in this simple circuit is just given this start signal to three of them so if it is start on operand on a, on a operation it to all three will generate result okay all three will either we don't generate result from the sequential part or we generate result from the sequential part we can like fine tune this also like okay send start signal to shifter on the shift operation and start signal to divider on divider operation and start signal to multiplier on the multiplier operation but we need to add like more circuitry on that like selectively circuit and sending to which which devices you can think of how can you do that i'll i'll, I'll leave it to you to think of that way but right now this is a um, we are putting together a very simple circuit which for multiplication division shift, shift operation of this three type of sequential operation our controller will will send a start signal with which will trigger all three of them together it's only at the selection time we select whatever result we want to uh, choose based on the operation 
on the combinational side since there is nothing to control on where you start the operation stop the operation they create result whenever there is an operand no matter what what is coming right it is it doesn't even depending on the clock okay and then we pick up the operation uh, based on the operation code the result out of these 10 operations uh, let's talk about this combinational done which is always set to one so done is telling you when certain operation is done like multiplier we have seen it it is done in 32 step uh, divider needs 33 step shifter is done depending on how many shift you are making like left shift right shift depending on that uh, it depends how many clock after how many clock after which it, it is a, it is a done of the operation right uh, but for the combinational circuit result is immediately available right but we still need to have something like a done so for all the combinatorial operation we have one combinational done signal which will be selected as a done out of this multiplexer uh, which uh, will be uh, selected for operation codes which uh, for which we were picking up combinational uh, output which is basically your slt add or sum nor or and okay so for these functions these comp done this signal will be selected as output of the multiplexer as a done signal for others it will be pick up like accordingly the operation uh, requested either multiplier done or divider done or shifter done so you can essentially see this multiplexer selection circuit has three outputs so practically we are using three four uh, sorry three of 16 to 1 uh, 32 bit multiplexer okay so you can well imagine how many gets we are talking of for one alu like we know how the multiplier look like we can count the gets uh, get counts there uh, in terms of basic gets and divider shifter we can count all of them and we also then therefore we can also count how many transistors are there right it's a quite a complex circuit even we simplified that okay with the start signal from the alu controller it will start all the sequential element it will start doing multiplication divisions shifting etc etc all right so now please review this circuit follow through carefully these signals each of the signal where it is connected where it is going and convince yourself this circuit will work now we'll focus on this alu controller how it works that's the sequential circuit itself okay to implement the controller uh, we must first start with a state diagram and once we have state diagram uh, clarified then from the state diagram we can uh, design a sequential circuit uh, following steps which we have described earlier uh, in this semester uh, for this one i think on paper pencil we won't be able to do uh, maybe with some trick yes but we won't be going in that detail on this uh, controller uh, designing as, as such uh, but in the very log, if you want to make an ALU, sequential ALU, you can pretty much uh, describe this behavior, this state transition and state table behavior there. And from there, you can design and observe, basically simulate the ALU and observe what is going on inside the ALU for a given function. Anyway, so this alu controller has like uh, five bit input okay so operation code which is in hex uh, four bit and done is one bit signal so it doesn't matter whether it is in x hex or not but oper for operation code we are representing that in the state diagram as a hexadecimal number and output is four bit output let's sequence them as a s and a control signal start load and lnr so all of them are given in the previous circuit by the way this 
this part of the circuit E is basically called a data path, especially which goes, which basically uh, shows the flow of the incoming data, how it is being processed and how it goes into the output data. Okay, so your data path in this case uh, has uh, you need to follow through the operand one, operand two, and operation code. So these are the three input data. And output data is basically result on low and high bit and down. So this any signal carrying either these uh, input to the sequential circuit or the output or some intermediate data or information as a part of generation, though and along with this uh, basic like components like multiplier, divider, shift, shifter, adder, this logic gets those are part of the data path okay just uh, make sure you understand this concept because we'll be using this data path and control path concept later in this lecture and there is another concept called control path which consists essentially of a controller okay some sort of controller here in this case it's a lu controller and those electrical or logical connections for the control signals. So here our control signal is basically LNR, start, load and SNA, these four bits. LU is a controller component and this comp and we have uh, operation code also going in the, the ALU controller. So that would be also a part of the control path of this circuit. So any sequential design we can thus divide into two major categories okay clean categories like one is the data path through which information are being crunched processed and then ultimately it goes through the output and control path is mainly consists of the control controller and the control signals which controls the other components in the data path okay so <coughs> we have now established the input and output to the uh, ALU controller and then let's see what we'll do okay so strt is a start state and as long as your operation code is zero which is no op by the function table that two slide back we we established a function a truth table for uh, this ALU so zero is a op no operation code there so as long as the operation code is zero it stays in the start state so nothing is happening inside the controller or inside the alu <coughs> then as long as as soon as it goes it receives three or four in hex that four bit it goes into some state called md md is that state we are doing a multiplication or division okay that in that state so another important part on this state transition any state transition is that what the output should look like so your output is bit is sna start load and lnr right so <clears throat> on the first transition that is no operation transition uh, we should keep the output start as 0 and load as 0 so that we don't accidentally load some bit pattern incoming bit pattern onto the registers in the on the multiplier shifter or the divider so we keep the load as 0 and also we don't want to start their operation so we keep the start as 0 as long as SNA and LNR goes they are really dictating uh, what type of function it is up subtraction or addition or if it is a left shift or right shift it doesn't matter right uh, you just do anything there so it's a don't care okay so our output should be saying at x 0 0 x don't care 0 0 which we may want to make sure start and load <coughs> we keep it at 0 and lnr as don't care now we get a multiplication or division that request so as soon as I get that request, I send a start signal to one, still keep the load as zero because load 
if you look at the data path load signal is solely going to the shifter your operand and oper uh, operand 1 and 2 both are directly fed into the multiplier and divider only shifter need this load operation so if uh, load we keep zero in this state transition from strt to md but we issue a start signal and after that in from that state as long as i am getting a zero as a done means after start your your multiplier or divider will start working on the problem and then at the end of the 32 or 33 clock cycle it will raise the down signal up right so <clears throat> so we are keeping an eye on the down signal now our operation code is x input operation code is x so we don't care what what are the other operation code coming in because i am not done in that alu so alu will ignore those operation code but it will keep an eye on the down signal and as long as done is zero which is not means that that component multiplier or divider is not done we keep output start as one and load as zero okay so why like it really depends on the divider multiplier circuit if the divider multiplier as a design inside if it needs only for first clock cycle to start to be one and after it's starting started it doesn't care about that start signal anymore in that case we would we would keep the start to zero right but here let's assume this we need to keep the start signal up throughout the uh, throughout the operation of multiplier and divider till it is done so that's why we are keeping start to one and load to zero so as soon as the now from this md state as soon as this done become one means multiplier or divider is saying hey i'm done i bring down the start signal to zero so no more no more division operation needed okay and going to the start step now similarly if my operation code comes in as one which is for addition then what we'll do we'll keep the s and a as zero which is for requesting the other subtractor to make an addition keep start to zero load to zero so that we don't start the operation in the sequential element we don't load the values in the shifter and lnr is don't care i don't care about the lnr in the very uh, same reasoning following the very same reasoning as as long as this done is zero uh, the, this will it will stay in the add state but addition you know this is a combination so very not next clock cycle uh, start will just get an one as a down signal and it will come back to the start state with keeping the start as zero okay in this case we can just i have shown you to for an example you can still put a load because we don't care right you don't not doing anything something is loaded in the shifter who cares so with that logic here for the md state when it come back it will also be like like that can be like that okay uh, don't care okay now uh, next state is sblt either subtraction or set less than so it's the same thing but operation code is two uh, an eight two or eight operation code don't care about the down signal yet and with that my sna should set to one because subtraction is requested and start and load i keep it to zero zero and x for the lnr until i am i don't i'm not done we stay in the sblt state and as soon as we get a down signal we turn down or the we can turn down sna or it's don't care basically lnr is don't care only we want to keep the start and load as zero zero it goes in the start signal sr similar uh, following the similar logic is shift right state so along uh, upon getting the code a operation code a we jump to there with now what we do 
we keep the start as zero and load as one. So while I'm transitioning from start to state to the shift state for it's, it's basically same for SR and SL shift left state or right state. I will keep the start at zero, but I want to load the pattern first into those into the register of the shift register, right? So that's why we make the load as one in this point. And then as long as I'm not done with the shift, okay, I keep the start signal on and load signal to zero. Okay, so this is important. And of course, if it is a shift right, so LNR, I need to keep at zero at this point. Okay. Then once it is done, I turn down the start and load both signal to zero, SNA and LNR don't care. Same logic you can follow through for the shift left and any logic operation, which is like the next state is like five, six, seven, like your AND, NOR, NOR, NOT, or NAND, NOR, OR. Uh, just look at the table that, I, that has been descri described. So we go to the logic state until we are done. Uh, we stay in the logic state, which is like one clock cycle again, like this is a combinational uh, operation. And then once they're done, we go back to the start test, st uh, start uh, state. So throughout this process, we keep the start and load signal to zero. And of course, on the reset, we start from a state, known state for STRT. So that's all. This is the ALU controller. If you if we can describe its behavior in the behavioral model in the Verilog, we can well just make a digital circuit out of it. There are tools to bring from the behavioral model uh, to a physical system, electronic system on the silicon. There, there, there are ways to do that. Okay, so first thing is the important thing is to come up with the state diagram. So as long as we come up with a state diagram, we can design and implement that circuit on the silicon. Now, if you look at this whole operation and with our previous experience with this uh, different uh, arithmetic operation circuit design, except for the division, all other functions can be implemented using combinational circuit, right? So we can have a um, like uh, combinational multiplier, we can have combinational shifter, the barrel shifter, right? So then this will not need any sequential control unit. This will not need to produce any down signal because we know there is an input and I'll get an output. There would be a time delay, of course. Uh, but if we, if my one clock cycle is covering the whole delay, then I'm good. Like in, within one clock cycle for the rest of the processor in one clock cycle, my operation is done. Maybe slower overall, of course, we're assuming within one clock cycle, this big giant multiplier circuit will just evaluate so that we are counting on that delay, of course. <coughs> and possibly need some small decoder to create this SNA and LNR signal depending on the, on the operation code we need to define, but that's an decoder kind of logic. That's not a sequential logic. So this part, that's why we kind of avoided a diff signal in the in the instruction set architecture of CS147DV so that we can implement a combinational ALU for our project three. Okay. So we don't want to go into the uh, complicacy of designing and writing some code for a sequential circuit in that project three. So that's why we uh, restricted ourselves to not to have a division operation in the in that CS147 TV instruction set architecture. 